These five scary videos are not to be watched before bed unless you want to have a nightmare. Number 5. Todd Walker of a ghost hunting channel called Holy Walkers has seen a lot over the years. But things get personal when something follows him from an investigation back to his home. On April 5th of 2019, he captured the first signs of it on camera. He even uses a second camera to show that there were no strings. I don't see any in either shot, but maybe they were erased using special effects. The cabinet moves a little more before the refrigerator flings open by itself, and you can't see very much, but the second camera just barely manages to show that there's absolutely no reflection before the fridge opens. In other words, nobody was standing there. Many more events happen over the next five days. Lampshades shake without being touched, doors shut on their own, and a shadow passes over the bottom of the steps. All of these could have been done using trick photography, so let's take a closer look. This lampshade looks like it moves on its own to me, and you can even hear a noise as something touches it while passing by two times. But at the same time, all the other objects are conveniently on the left side of the screen and partially concealed, which would make moving them easy. Todd could have pushed the couch here at 3 minutes and 8 seconds and pushed it back at 3 minutes and 20 seconds by himself. Likewise, the book that falls at 3 minutes and 45 seconds could have been pushed off camera and someone could just be grabbing the corner of the lamp at 3 minutes and 54 seconds while hiding behind the couch. The same goes for when it flips over at 4 minutes and 6 seconds. But look what's on the wall when it falls. That looks like a shadow person to me, and I don't see what else could be causing it to form there. A spirit is possibly bending the light to get noticed. But when the light goes out 8 seconds later, Todd could have simply unplugged it from the wall so maybe it's not real. The other couch moves at 4 minutes and 49 seconds, but Todd could have crawled behind that one. I would have liked to have seen both couches move at the same time because it wouldn't be possible for one person to move them simultaneously. Around this time is when Todd's son Kyle emerges from his room and possibly starts sleepwalking except for two things. One, this strange shadow passes by where he just was, though it could be light from another room switching on and off. Two, it's followed by a loud crash that somehow doesn't wake him up. Which makes me think he's either faking all of this or in a deep trance as he stands at the top of the steps and stares directly at the camera. Could this be a setup for a dramatic effect, or is this the spirit's way of letting Todd know that it's aware of being watched? Kyle looks like he's going to fall forward, but at the last moment something pushes him back and guides him into his room, almost like it's not time for that to happen yet, but possibly foreshadowing that he could be thrown down the steps in the near future if the spirit so desires. Nothing else happens for a while until four days later when their camera records this ball mysteriously rolling down the hallway. They claim not to have done it themselves, but I'm surprised they don't have a second angle to show it really wasn't them. So I think this could have been their doing after all, but probably not considering what happens next. Todd feels the paranormal energy growing stronger, so he decides to explore his house late at night while everyone else is asleep. He picks up more indicators that the spirit of a child is near, one who might have met a particularly gruesome end. I think this could be Todd wheezing, but many people say it sounds like a girl screaming from outside. What do you hear? The fact that he hears it too kind of proves it was a ghost. He goes outside and this time I definitely hear it again, much clearer. Is there anyone out here? And again, he hears it too, so I guess this is real after all. 
Whenever Todd tells the ghost to speak, he seems to get an answer. Back in the living room, he hears an eerie chant that I can't get out of my mind. Many others in the comments hear it too. Do you? Make yourself known. Oh dude, I swear someone just came from back here. What was that? This was the same area where the couches and lamps were moving, so I'm not surprised. Meanwhile, this paper towel roll is on its side at 7 minutes and 30 seconds and yet, at 14 minutes and 30 seconds it's mysteriously standing up and at no point do we see Todd stop to do this by himself. And besides that, I kind of see a little girl's face in the door that soon disappears. And when he tells the girl to speak to him directly, the child's voice gets really deep and scary. Back, I'll be able to hear you. Is there anything that you want to say? That's not him because he's exhaling when the voice happens. Hopefully the little girl ghost doesn't stay for long, and more importantly whatever took her life didn't follow. But since Kyle almost got thrown down the steps, I think we all know something else is with them. Number 4. Mr. Hearth is the name of a YouTuber who isn't afraid to take on the most haunted places in all of Egypt. This time he goes to the abandoned house of a person who used to practice black magic, until it claimed their life. Now they are doomed to forever remain trapped in this abandoned home. Digging amongst the rubble is a wild animal that appears to pay no attention to Mr. Hearth, which in his culture is a sign that it could be a demon in disguise. It walks behind something and vanishes. I notice this room has more tape than anyone would normally need, though what he needed it for was anyone's guess. Tell me what Mr. Marth is saying here. It becomes clear that something is following him, often hiding in the room he was just in. Some of what happens looks like he could be doing it himself. I think he kicked the box in the air when he was turning around, and he almost definitely does it again here. But some encounters would have required a second person to pull it off, and it looks like to me that he's all alone. No one is in this small room and yet 15 seconds later the door opens all by itself. Either one of his friends is off camera doing this on purpose to make the video scarier, or the spirit is seemingly playing with his mind, reopening every door that he passes through. Most of the time the sounds are too far away to be coming from where he's standing. And some things happen out of his reach with no one around at all. Look at the window again. This is clear, close up, and there's no string. And I guess this could have been done with string, but the way it returns to the open position is odd. So I thought Mr. Hearth could be doing this himself. But the deeper he goes, the more I question what I said before. This door moves by itself and there is absolutely nobody on the other side. There's no room for anybody to have been standing behind it either, and there's no editing cuts as he checks for himself. Maybe he kicked it himself, but he definitely doesn't kick it here a couple minutes later. This is the same door, and it just 
opens. On the table he finds these mysterious cards filled with information. Someone translate this if possible. Maybe we can figure out what this person who was living here was up to. Objects on the ground move without being touched as the house swells with an intense negative force. Something is near, different than the other spirits, angrier and more hopeless. A feral cat watches with interest as he passes, not bothering to run even when he shines the light directly on it. Odd behavior for a wild animal with no trust of humans and a possible indication that this could be a djinn. It only stands there when asked if it's a djinn, and refuses to be shooed away. And the other eyes are watching as well. They all seem to be hiding from something besides him. Mr. Hearth senses he should leave soon and takes one last look around. At 11.37 you can see the corner of his room is empty except for some trash. But when he does a final pass less than a minute later, this is in the corner with him. A figure in all black robes stands motionless, not even acknowledging him. Maybe it's one of his friends, or maybe it's the old owner himself, back again with one last curse up his sleeve to cast on us all. Number 3. Mark Abel has dedicated himself to uncovering a hidden cryptid race that lives just outside our civilization. They are watching him always, giant beings who usually manage to stay out of sight while leaving behind plenty of signs for him to come across in the Colorado forest, and he's not the only one who knows of them. Nearly 50,000 subscribers are interested in Mark's findings, many of whom are cryptid hunters themselves with their own similar experiences to share, stories of the same forest monster that Mark himself has video evidence of. But before I show you what this cryptid looks like, let me show you what it's capable of. Okay, this place is just so unbelievable. I've never seen anywhere like this before. Mark obviously is not strong enough to bend these trees, but something else is, and when they aren't grabbing the tops of trees and pulling down, then they're usually carefully arranging them in these weird X formations, or stacking trees whole to form primitive fences, presumably to keep Mark from finding something they don't want him to see. Mark is extremely familiar with the backwoods of Colorado. He knows that sometimes trees can fall against each other and form an X, but that rarely happens. And seeing this formation repeat so many times is just not natural. He believes he has developed a connection with them over the years and knows when they are near. So if there's a whole bunch of them over there, and I'm walking, or whatever, there's something over there they don't want me to walk towards. And when they're close, he instinctively looks left, barely missing one as they duck behind a tree. And uh... He lets the woods guide him to another strange clearing, an area that looks unlike any other part of the forest he's ever seen. Trees are unnaturally bent, and more tribal structures are in the center, as if someone has broken apart and carefully stacked these trees on their own, again forming signature triangles and an X in the middle. In the distance is another tree pile that he feels is holding secrets of some kind. There's something so going on right there. When he gets there, he finds two more signs right across from each other, followed by a third. At the end of the path of matted grass, he finds this assortment of sturdy sticks that he thinks could have been a seat for one of the younger ones. He eventually comes across a cave and gets the feeling of being watched. The cave splits into two smaller paths and one of them continues to the right. At 4 minutes and 18 seconds, this humanoid shadow shrinks away from his light no less than two times. He thinks this is the main chamber and looks for a reason to go further, missing another shadow at 4 minutes and 53 seconds. Mark is looking at every last cave opening and zooms in on some bedding that must have been dragged in by a creature. As he does so, he misses a face that he doesn't see until later. It looks like it could be a rock, but it has two white eyes, possibly one of their young hiding from the camera. And outside the cave he finds more bent trees that I agree have to have been pulled down. There's no reason for them to be growing at this strange angle. Mark returns to the cave next year, only to find a giant footprint in the snow outside. Whatever lives inside this cave has completely rearranged it. The opening where he saw the face is now blocked off, and when he looks inside, I see brief movements from within. 
Right around where he saw the face last year, he now finds these remains. Could this be the same younger specimen? And if not, then what is it? And what brought it down here? Much of the cave is now rearranged and blocked off in a way that's not a landslide. These stones put up to block the entrance are thin and stacked by hand. This time, he finds a larger cavern that goes deep under the mountain. He finds a stick here that was either placed there by him, which I doubt, or brought in by something from outside. While zooming in on the mountain itself, he catches this ape-like figure not far away that appears to have white fur. It's bent at the knee and could be going down the mountain. It has to be easily twice the size of a person to be visible from this great of a distance, and when Mark thinks he hears one from behind, it looks like he could be right. Whoa. Ben, I gotta go. Number 2. Before I show you what's in this box, I want to make it clear that I'm not to be held responsible for anything that happens to you as a result of looking at it. Okay, with that said, I was wondering if looking at this doll makes you feel different. A note from its previous owners says the doll has been known to cause terrible headaches as well as inescapable sadness that makes you wish your life would end. Trying to ignore its effects simply makes it worse. The doll has no name, or maybe its previous owners were too afraid to say it. Anyway, if you're wondering how a doll could possibly give you a headache, this is how. One day, it makes a high-pitched squeal and moves. I'm sure she just moved then. I think I may have gotten a headache from this that lasted for days, but I want to know what you experienced, if anything. Anyway, the camera person sounds a little sad as she explains she won't be having a live stream with the doll tonight. Perhaps her mood is already being affected. Hey guys, just a quick um, video. We're not going live tonight. Um because we're out on an investigation tomorrow. And the doll's arm moves ever so slightly when she says this. But that's not all. She's deep asleep in her room full of creepy dolls at 5 in the morning when this happens. The baby's carriage moves on its own. Inside it is not the same doll as before, but look who's watching over them when it happens. Who else but her most recent addition, the unnamed doll itself. And this piece of paper in front of the doll also moves at the same time. I think whatever is attached to this doll has telekinetic properties, which would explain how the doll was able to move days earlier. It wasn't moving by itself, it was being moved by the spirit attached. And look at the way these wheels wobble as the carriage moves. It looks like somebody's steering from behind rather than pulling it on a string. It's been over two months since the last video was posted. Maybe nothing has happened since then, or maybe so much has happened that the uploader got rid of the doll and no longer wants to remember this part of their life. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds? Because Chills uploads 4 new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what Chills looks like in real life, then go to his Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1. Project Unity is an underground network dedicated to shedding light on the craziest unidentified anomalies ever caught in the sky. Here's what they found so far. On March 11th of 2020, this giant ball of orange light was seen hovering above the beaches of Carpinteria, California. It flashes yellow and orange and appears to contain a host of unexplained activity within it. It looks highly similar to a sighting on March 3rd of 2015 when this solid ball of light was spotted over Houston, Texas. This time they zoom in to reveal changing lights clustered together, almost like a galaxy, which then spread to form an oval formation that doesn't move. This requires a high-powered camera to see. Without it, it looks just like a white sphere with no details, possibly a cloaking device. Is this what they would see again over California years later? On March 24th of 2019, the same glowing ball of light was spotted high above Manusk, France. I feel like we see it move a great distance in a short period of time, perhaps even light years gradually fading away like a star. It also resembles a sighting over Cuba in 2019, in which case a bright ball of light reveals working mechanical parts when zoomed in. Again, nothing is revealed until the camera zooms all the way in, almost like it's a cloaking device that we're seeing past. The bright nucleus could be atomic energy. 
And finally, the same flying orb was apparently sighted over Russia in 2019. It's an intense white, much like the Houston sighting, bright enough to cast a halo across the clouds and then it fades in intensity much like the others. The camera person doesn't zoom in so we never do get to see if it has more strange activity going on inside, but if it's anything like the other sightings then that's probably a given. So most of these sightings happen during the month of March, which could be a clue. The others may have happened in March, but the dates have not been confirmed. I really doubt all of these people knew each other, so for all of them to fake a video showing a bright orb that hovers in the air seems fairly unlikely. These are the kind of similarities that Project Unity is hoping to highlight. If it weren't for them, we might never have realized the same orb has been sighted for years across the world. It could be special effects, it could be an advanced drone, or it could be what we've suspected all along. Nobody on this list knew they were going to see some of the scariest things ever caught on camera with their drone. 